Welcome to our webcast, Consequences Made Easy, an Effective Discipline Tool. We'll be talking about using consequences to help you to impose discipline in a way that teaches your children responsibility and accountability and encourages them to look inward to learn how they can do things differently in the future. Many times, parents hand out harsh consequences in the heat of the moment, saying such things as, That's it. No TV for a month. Or, I'm tired of always cleaning up after you. I'm going to give all your toys to someone who will appreciate them. They use such threats, which they rarely follow through on, and then wonder why consequences don't work. When we are angry, our consequences are often a punitive rather than a teaching tool. In this article, we will examine a way of using consequences that will teach your children to respect and submit appropriately to authority, to follow rules, and to accept responsibility for their behavior. If used appropriately, consequences will maintain your children's self-esteem and your relationship with your children, even as you discipline them. We believe that the goal of discipline and of, all, and of consequences is to help our children to become independent, responsible, respectful, appreciative, mature, and hardworking, to name just a few. There are many tools that one can use to discipline their children, as you can see playing here on our screen. It is best to use the method that will be the least restrictive and to give your children the greatest opportunity to learn from the situation. If discipline is too harsh, children will spend their energy being angry at you, rather than looking at what they did wrong. When we talk about consequences, there are actually three main types. The first are natural consequences, which happen automatically without any action on our part. For example, if your children won't wear a raincoat on a rainy day, they'll get wet. If they forget their lunch, they will be hungry. We can use natural consequences whenever the result is not morally, physically, or emotionally damaging. They are highly effective because, as the saying goes, experience is the best teacher. The second type is logical or related consequences. And in these, we step in. For example, if your child won't dress properly for the weather, they may not go out. Or if they do not clean up a toy, we may clean it up, and they cannot play with it for a speci specified amount of time. This works well when there is a specific issue and the consequence is clear. The third and last type of consequences are imposed, not related. You use it if you aren't sure what to do, if you can't think of a related consequence, if the related consequences haven't worked, or if there are multiple infractions. It involves the suspension of some or all privileges. For example, perhaps your child didn't just leave out a toy, but he did not clean up his toys or his clothes or his books. You're frustrated and not sure what to do. At this point, all privileges are suspended. This is not the same thing as bribing, threatening, or punishing. It's just that when problems arise, we have to stop everything because we need to deal with the situation before we move on. Suspension of privileges is different from taking privileges away. It implies that the child will have some power in getting the privileges reinstated. It is not a you-against-them stance, rather it is a you-with-them position. We consider this a very strong tool and, like a spice, should be used sparingly and with care. Before deciding on consequences, first ask yourself, what does my child need to learn? And then, which method would be most effective to teach them? You may have noticed that we said that all privileges would be suspended. Let's take a closer look at this concept of privileges. Your relationship with your children can be categorized as including parental obligations, where you absolutely must give your children, such as basic nutritious food, proper medical care, school attendance, and respect. Privileges, on the other hand, are what you choose to give to your children, such as special foods that meet their preferences, outings, sports, and activities. Sometimes we get so caught up giving to our children that we miss what power we have. Parents often forget that some things they give their children are privileges, and as such, they can be taken away when necessary. 
While we're creating two black and white categories for this presentation, please remember that the delineation between a privilege and an obligation may be different in different households. So, how do you use suspension of privileges as a consequence? When you can't think of a logical consequence, you can use suspension of privileges. It can be the suspension of all privileges if it's a serious problem or if it's a chronic problem that you've tried to resolve with other techniques but to no avail. But before you can use privileges as a consequence, you need to teach your children what you mean by privileges. Each parent will need to find his or her own words, but for example, there are certain things that I think are privileges that you have, and they're not things that you're automatically entitled to. It's my pleasure to let you have and do these things, but when you behave in a way that goes against our family rules, then I'm going to suspend those privileges until we resolve the problem. You'll need to let your children know what the privileges are. You can brainstorm with them or present them a list, depending on their age and maturity level. The second part of consequences involves how children get out of trouble. As we have seen, the parent has the power to suspend the privileges, and as we will discuss, the child can decide when the privileges are reinstated by behaving in a way and by making amends. Under these terms, the child is given the power to rectify the situation. If the consequence is lifted according to a certain amount of time that's set by the parents, there is less learning and the child has less power. If the child has to do certain things, such as go through a guided process with you and make amends to have the consequences met or lifted, there is more learning that occurs and the child has more power, and we believe that the latter is more helpful. To earn back privileges, it's not merely a matter of time, but having the child go through more or less of a formal process to enhance the learning. The following are a list of the issues that need to be addressed. The first are the facts. The details of the situation, the who, what, where, and when. Next, opinions. What were they thinking or feeling? Why did it get them in trouble? Next is to create an action plan. This includes several pieces. To whom do you need to apologize or make amends? What else needs to happen to correct the situation? What specific actions can you take to prevent it from happening again? And to keep our children working with us, we look at their wishes and requests. What do you wish others understood? What help do you need to deal with this problem? And finally, their feelings. What are their thoughts and feelings? This is meant to help them learn and grow and to develop the relationship you have with your children. How you have your children answer these questions can vary depending on the severity of the situation and the child's age. For a smaller issue or for a younger child, you can just have a short conversation. For a more important issue or for a child to whom writing would just feel like a punishment, you can have an in-depth conversation going through all of the questions we just listed. And finally, for a more serious issue or for an older child, or for a very emotionally in charged situation, you can have the child respond in writing. As soon as your child has satisfactorily answered these questions, they can regain their privileges. Many parents are surprised to find that their children do not answer these questions as quickly as they expected. Where their parent may have limited computer use for a week, their children still have not answered the questions after two or three weeks. The children are still thinking through the questions. Interestingly, had these parents instituted the punishment, it would have been over much sooner and before the children were ready, usually without internalizing the values or holding themselves accountable or gaining responsibility. So what can you expect as you begin to use this information? For you, it will get easier over time as the children learn that you mean business. If you aren't used to enforcing limits, you may need to give yourself time to become confident. Sometimes a non-negotiable rule needs to be set instead of establishing a consequence. If you've tried consequences and the child is not able to obey, it may be a maturity issue and the child may need firmer structure and a clear rule. You can check out our article online about rules for more information. From your children, you can expect that some children will appreciate the clarity and respond well to the use of consequences in this way. Some may resist more, depending on their temperament, maturity, and their age. Allow them to disagree respectfully. 
Which brings us to our final point, what to do if children resist disrespectfully. You can allow them to resist and complain, but if it becomes disrespectful, then you may need to impose another consequence. If only one privilege was suspended, you want, may want to revoke all of them. The child will still now need to go through the process for the initial offense, and additionally will now need to go through the same process of the form for the secondary offense of being disrespectful. What you are teaching your children is that arguing with you will not be worth the effort. You mean what you say. They can start to follow your guidelines now without a lot of grief, or later with a lot of grief. In the end, though, you will not be swayed by their bad behavior. You can teach them how to approach you to have a respectful conversation about the situation. In closing, as noted author Barbara Coloroso says, it is not the severity of the consequences that has impact, it is the certainty of it. Thank you for joining our webcast. You can see more articles about discipline and other topics by visiting our website. We look forward to hearing from you.